Imagine four cameras. Imagine four cameras displayed in the city. Cinema for me was always very tame and very, very conservative. And so as soon as the technology said, oh, you can fuck with it more, I went, I'm up for that, let's, let's go, you know. My background is actually live performance art, of which cinema was a part of. Yeah, I trained as a musician, so I had that skill. You're thinking of layers, and you're thinking of harmonic ideas, and you're thinking of the fugue as a kind of narrative and all of that sort of thing. Come in, Brendan. Film technology, when I came into it, seemed very primitive. We were still mixing sound on these tanks. No, no. But you happen to have them with you? Well, I, I carry them with me. Um, so time code, in a way, was like, OK, finally, there's a camera that's small enough, that runs for long enough that you could sort of like now start considering the ideas that you've been developing in live theater or whatever for quite some time. You're just never in. I've been at myself running down that nosy bitch. You did a lot of macho things then. This is very common among transsexuals. I remember bumping into Brian De Palma at the Rotterdam Film Festival, um, having a really great time with him and him, but him, and like pointing out that he'd been there a lot, a lot before me. You're going to be sending a gay. A new film experience. You don't need glasses, but this spectacular new technique does require special projection equipment. It's so beautiful, the way you tell your story. Where did you learn that? Did you go to school? Well, I said, okay, well, let's just literally line it up on the clap or on the pause and then hit play at the same time and we'll both we'll just watch the two screens and i was immediately so enthralled by like wow we were both getting good footage but you were getting like this completely different kind of cubist psychology you know like suddenly i never quite understood why i was but you were getting more than twice the amount of information you would from a single shot the eye was suddenly liberated you weren't just the prisoner of the edit. Anyway, that kind of lodged in my head. We finished the film by watching everything in stereo, as it were. I was in a very good place at the time. I'd done Leaving Las Vegas, so I was kind of, um, you know, one of their favorite boys uh, in the studio system. So I was kind of still earning money. Um, I had a deal at Sony, they liked me. Uh, I'd bought my own 16mm camera, so I had my own equipment, and that was a sense of liberation. I made this note in my notebook, which was experimental film idea, you know. Started off with just two cameras, and just thinking of a, of a kind of narrative that would be split screen. And then I suddenly expanded it to four screens. Uh, why not? Why not? Then I went, well, could we go to six? And I said, no, no, four, let's contain it there. And I started to write this kind of bullshit story, I think inspired by that sort of Truffaut, Nouvelle Vague idea that all you need is a you know, pretty girl and a gun and all that shit, you know. Just to kind of keep the sort of conventional narrative interesting, but it's not important. That just needs to basically feed this idea of four screens. So I got the big conductor score paper. I blocked out 95 bars on the string quartet blank. And then literally, I just started in pencil first kind of going, began with Stellan's character, I think, and then took him on a journey through all the cameras. I started weaving in the other characters one by one until the music paper started to really fill up. And then the delight of just moving things. And then obviously once we started shooting, I turned all the actors into musicians. They all had their own copy of the music paper and they were all responsible for their own line. Also exactly the same technique with the camera people. The three guys and me, I shot one, three other guys. 
everybody had the same digital watch, which we would synchronize religiously uh, every morning at 10 o'clock, you know, all the way through the film. And sometimes it was down to seconds, you know, so like the earthquakes had to be literally on the second, otherwise it didn't work. You know, everyone's timing had to, had to be perfect. <laughs> I can't think. I'm just annoyed at the scene and my participation in it, although my participation in it was perfect. Oh, hello, dear. We'll, we'll discuss, discuss only, only three. three. When I was, you know, really into experimental uh, performance, there was some pretty, pretty good stuff going on. I mean, far more advanced intellectually than anything I saw in cinema. So like the Worcester group in New York. There's a place in France where the women wear no pants. I toured with them. I, I know, Willem Dafoe was, I've known him since he was 18. I also was doing a lot of reading and I started reading about Owen Piscato and these live projections they were doing with live music and everything in Berlin in the 20s. There's no record of it, of course. There's no video, there's nothing there. So you just have the kind of um, descriptions of it. And I was like, wow, what were they doing? And then. Napoleon is unbelievable, right? So the idea that people at the beginning of the century, the birth of cinema were already kind of going, well, we could do this, but they don't have to just do Hollywood shit, you know? That was very much in my imagination. It's really amazing, you know, it looks like some kind of uh, biblical, epical, unbelievable scene. I hadn't seen four screens. There were moments in Woodstock that I thought were pretty amazing when they, when they break the, you know, the screens up. And they'd shot it all, a lot of it was shot on 16, I think. So it was in the air and I also, you know, was interested in Hitchcock's experiment with rope, so, albeit one screen. This is what you wanted, isn't it? Somebody else to know. Somebody else to see how brilliant you are, just like at school. And so a combination of already a kind of dissatisfaction with montage, the idea that, you know, you know, cut to, cut to, cut to, fade to, cut to, like this, it's very mono. Um, and everything I'd done in music has never been mono. You know, somebody like you can really make things all right for me. You think? When I see her. When I see her. How's Sarah doing? Good. Yeah? Yeah. Good. Yeah. She wasn't here tonight, was she? I didn't... <laughs> What happened as soon as we started shooting and we got comfortable with, okay, our timing, you started to look for opportunities. Oh, sorry. The guy who was shooting Gene Triplehorn, the back of the limo, I realized that when Kyle is, is talking on the phone, he's ringing out Stellan, he's on the sidewalk outside Tower Records. And if I moved him a little bit, he would, he pulled focus and he goes from Gene, who's doing coke. We were looking for the economies of like having people stack up in the frame. I can't wait too long because we have a meeting. Okay, George, we're going to wait just a second. Well, it does matter because. You know, it's actually the ultimate control because I would say it's a kind of uber technique, in fact. I mean, there's a funny story that's very indicative of this. So I was doing a talk in San Francisco um, about time code and about how I was directing with the audio. And I said, how many of you noticed the blonde stealing the book from Book Soup? I went, she stole a book. I said, yeah, she's a shoplifter, but no one ever notices. And then this one girl said, I went, I saw it. And I went, oh, that's interesting. She said, I'm gay. Um, everybody else is watching Stellan Skarsgård and Salma fucking. That girl's really hot. I was just watching her. So yes, I saw her stealing the book, you know, and I went, there you go. That's interesting. She managed to break out of my 
dictatorial kind of like manipulation because she wanted to watch that girl. So at a certain point when I was also doing a lot of, you know, the live mixes, it's just, it's just lovely sometimes to take all the sound out and then just watching, you suddenly realize you're watching an abstract film. If, you, if you're not being told dialogue, you have no idea what's going on. So you're suddenly free to notice. And at those moments, for me, what can you do with the cameras in a purely experimental world? Lock down the entire facility immediately. Four. The quartets. The quartets are great. Three and four are great numbers. Exponentially, it gets, you know, then you have to make so many decisions about where to put the lights and so on. Too many options, and I think you, you cross the line, you lose contact with the audience, you know, and then it becomes an effect, I think. You know. Everybody, hi. Hey. Hello. Welcome to Sales Corp Industries' first Zoom call. The creator of Scott Pilgrim himself, Mr. Brian Leo Malley, in the house. Hey. I find it very limited. Now, this isn't right, is it? What we're using now is a kind of helpline device. It's very unsophisticated. I think this is not right. And so it needs some really smart guys and women working on to get much more sophisticated because clearly even post pandemic, you know, people have got hooked on to this. So I think it's here to stay, but it's definitely here to be improved. I, I don't know how to get up. I can't even get up. I mean, here's the deal. Cinema as an industry has taken a massive kicking in the last year, right? There will definitely be a kind of pandemic effect. Cinema's closing, et cetera, et cetera. How cinema comes out of that will be interesting because the technology to replace it exists, which is a tough thing to say because a lot of the people who form, as it were, the mainstream film industry, the old school film industry, maybe won't have a job. And I, and I feel terribly sad for them. But uh, that's never been my thing anyway. And then, as we discussed, some of this remote stuff, you know, can be useful as part of the narrative as well, because that's become also part of our language of how we communicate. And, you know, they're having to use this for every single form of communication that would have been reserved for in-person meetings and things like that. So, uh, all kinds of dark deeds have been done. What about the final you took today? Parent, you can help us with who your daughter talks to. Is that something you can do? Yes. The problem is with mainstream productions is they they use technology they don't embrace it you know they it's just a tool to them you know and so then oh you can do it like this and this and this and it's just like by the numbers you know so they don't actually love the technology enough to kind of be bold i think you know a lot of young filmmakers actually did good stuff with it a lot of horror stuff is very good for that you know and edgy kind of social stuff shot on iPhones and all, and all of that, you know. It certainly kind of opened the world up. And have him wretch up his ungodly life with his own liquid offal. You know, the film I made next, in a way, was just as interesting, which was Hotel, which sometimes used four screens, sometimes used two screens, and a lot of times just used one screen, and then sometimes used a very small screen within the screen, you know. I became interested by, well, what does format tell you? Because we had this bizarre cameo from Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds is a kind of Cinemascope type actor. So I went into Cinemascope, despite shooting on a PD-100. Who's in charge here? Yeah? And so I like to do one more and pick up the ideas we've discussed and take them to another level with narrative. How often do you sleep together? Do you have sex often? Hardly ever, maybe three times a week. Constantly, I'd say three times a week. I am. Um... So nice. <laughs> In a way, I would say cinema is about taking the deconstructed and bringing it back together, because a drama has to give an audience the idea of construction or destruction. We're drawn to stories because 
we fear destruction and so we want to be assured with construction so in moments like that you kind of go oh there is an order in the world i see things do come together coincidences are significant blah 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 you know we did it they did it whether that's true or not is up for grabs but in terms of how you can connect with an audience and at this point now i'm an audience because i watch it just fabulous you know Seems so distant now. Well, I thought it might be fun to stay in. I'm in the mood for a home-cooked meal. <laughs>